everyone. It's your girl Chantel, and it's time for us to continue reading the word of the Lord. We are in the book of Leviticus. I said it normal today, <laughs> but you know it was in the back of my mind. I wanted to go Leviticus. <laughs> So come on in the room, come on in the room, come on in the room. Look, God is going to say some things to us as we read the word of God that many of you all are going to want to click off. But I'm asking you not to click off because God is getting ready to get all in our business today. So let me go out here and share this broadcast and we are going to get started. All right. And make sure you get your Bibles out. Oh, wait a minute. Why isn't it showing up? All right, there it is. All right, let me share this real quick. And hey, Jackie, I was thinking about you maybe last week. I'm so glad you're on. How you doing? I'm so glad to see that you're on. All right, let me get this started real quick. All right. So we are going to be talking about some very tight topics that a lot of people don't want to talk about. But we're going to talk about them today. You're going to hear it today. Don't click off, people. Don't click off. Oh, thank you, Jackie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah, thank you. All right, so here we go. We're going to go straight in because we're reading five chapters today. Um, as I explained a couple of days ago, right now we're scheduled to be done by the first week in August. But I'm going to try to move this up and try to finish in July. So that means I have to read an extra chapter here or there to try to get us out of August because I don't want to just uh, uh, start one week in August and then we're done. And then there's some other things that we're going to be starting. Um, but I'll talk about that later when I have more time because I got to go to work, you know, after I get done with this. And I don't have a lot of time um, to really linger today. So we're going to go right ahead and get started. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you together and read your word and learn of you. We thank you that you are pouring out of your spirit into us. We thank you, Lord God, that you are causing our eyes to be open, to see the word, to not only to see the word, but to actually understand it and apply it to our lives. We thank you that our ears are being opened so that we can hear your voice clearly as we're reading your word and you're ministering your love and you're ministering encouragement and you're ministering faith and you're strengthening us and you're building us and you're causing our foundation to become firm and sure. We thank you that we hear your word clearly. Father, we are so excited about what you are doing in our lives. You are writing your word on the tables of our heart. Hallelujah. We don't have to grope in the darkness trying to figure out what we're to do, but you are showing us through the word how to live victoriously. And then, Lord God, we thank you that you have allowed Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, 
to be here in the earth today to minister the truth of the gospel to each of us. We thank you that Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He reveals the truth of the gospel. He tears down all myths. He tears down all lies. He tears down all untruth and he rips it to shreds so that it doesn't have a foundation in our lives. It can't come back in and get us off track. Truth will always dispel a lie. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the spirit of truth. In our world, there's so much untruth, there's so many lies, there's so many myths that people don't know which direction to go in. But I thank you that there are many spirits in this world, but there is only one Holy Spirit who is the Spirit of God, who knows the mind of God, who acts on the Word of God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are ever present in our lives. It's you, Holy Spirit, who nudges us when we are getting ready to do things that won't please God. It's you, Holy Spirit, that tells us pull back it's you, Holy Spirit, that tells us that's not a person to be around. They're going to bring destruction to your life. It's you, Holy Spirit, who reveal the hearts and, and, and the will and the intents of people. It's you, Holy Spirit, that causes us to change our direction. So, Holy Spirit, we want you in our life. We desire you to be in our lives and to guide us showing us the signpost that God has put out for our lives. We thank you for this Holy Spirit. We thank you that you're even softening our hearts so that we can receive even the hard words of the word of God, those things that we don't want to receive, those things that when we hear it, we spit it back out. You are causing us not to spit it out, but to actually embrace it and apply it to our lives. So we thank you for this, Lord God. We thank you for everything that you are doing in our lives. And then, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the sacrifice that you did, the finished work of the cross. It was because of your blood that was shed. Hallelujah. It was because of your blood that was shed. That very same blood is cleansing us yet even today. You're causing us to be cleansed and purified so that we can come before the Father. You are the door that we all enter in through. We can't come through the side door. We can't come through the back door. But we have to come through the entrance of the gate of Jesus. We thank you that there's not 5,000 ways to God. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. Not Jesus and, not Jesus and or, but Jesus so we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We thank you for the finished work of the cross. And we thank you, Lord God, for the faith to believe that you are the atoning. Uh, you are the atonement. There is no other. There's not going to be another person coming along later on to atone for all the sins. You've already done it. Now all we have to do is receive you. So we thank you that you're causing our hearts to be enlarged, to receive you, to receive love, to receive your grace, to walk in faith, to walk out of your mind instead of the mind of this world. Ha! Huh. Your mind is right here in this word, and you're teaching us what you desire. You're teaching us how to walk victoriously. You're teaching us to follow your statutes. That's when we'll see victory. So we thank you for this, Lord God. Thank you that you didn't leave it to us to try to figure it out. But you left us a plan, a guide, a, 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 a light post, a, a shining light saying, go this way, walk this way, turn this way, follow this, get away from them, follow me. We thank you, Lord God. We're ever grateful for what you're doing. Hallelujah. We thank you for this fresh wind that is blowing in our life, blowing out all the clutter, blowing out all the debris, so that we can walk in liberty, free in you. We thank you for this, Lord God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, ha, the atonement for all sins. We thank you, Lord God. Amen. Glory to the Lamb of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Glory. All right, guys, we're going to dive in because a couple of these books are pretty long. All right. So we're going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And I want to thank everyone that comes on and watches the broadcast later on. I know many of you all are from different countries and we have different time zones. I greatly appreciate you. I thank you all. And I'm so glad that God allowed you to stop and watch the broadcast. Don't forget to share it. Don't forget to follow the page. That way you'll know whenever we're coming on. And whenever you see the video, you may not have time to watch it right then. But if you go up to the very top of that video, you'll see three little dots. I call them cookie crumbs. You press those cookie crumbs and you'll see save video. You can save the video and watch it later. Or you can just go to the page and watch it later. All right. So thank you so much for joining us as we read the word of the Lord. All right. So here we go. Leviticus chapter 16. Put your seatbelts on and don't unbuckle until we're done. Because it is going to get tight in here today. The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons. Who died after they entered the Lord's presence and burned the wrong kind of fire before him. Remember a couple of days ago, we asked you, what kind of fire are you trying to present to God? What, what is it that you're trying to present to God that he has not accepted? The Lord said to Moses, warn your brother Aaron not to enter the most holy place behind the inner curtain whenever he chooses. He just couldn't go in and out whenever he wanted to. If he does, he will die. For the ark's cover, the place of atonement is there. And I myself am present in the cloud above the atonement cover. When Aaron enters the sanctuary area, he must follow these instructions fully. He must bring a young bull for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He must put on his linen tunic and the linen gar undergarments worn next to his body. He must tie the linen sash around his waist and put the linen turban on his head. These are sacred garments. So he must bathe himself in water before he puts them on. Aaron must take from the community of Israel two male goats for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. Then he must take two male goats and present them to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. He is to cast sacred lots to determine which goat will be reserved as an offering to the Lord and which will carry the sins of the people to the wilderness of Aziel. Aaron will then present as a sin offering the goat chosen by Lot for the Lord. The other goat, the scapegoat, chosen by Lot to be sent away, will be kept alive, standing before the Lord. When it is sent away to Aziel in the wilderness, the people will be purified and made right with the Lord. There's so much in here that if we were doing a deeper Bible study, there's so much in here about the scapegoat that you should go and study yourself and understand why God did that. Verse 11, Aaron will present his own bull as a sin offering to purify himself and his family, making them right with the Lord. After he has slaughtered the bull as a sin offering, he will fill an incense burner with burning coals from the altar that stands before the Lord. Not just any coals could go in the incense burner. Then he will take two handfuls of fragrant powdered incense and will carry the burner and the incense behind the inner curtain. There in the Lord's presence, he will put the incense on the burning coal, coals so that a cloud of incense will rise over the ark's cover. The place of atonement that rests on the ark of the covenant. If he follows these instructions, he will not die. Then he must make some of the blood, I'm sorry, then he must take some of the blood of the bull, dip his finger in it, and sprinkle it on the east side of the atonement cover. 
he must sprinkle set the, he must sprinkle blood seven times with his finger in front of the atonement cover. Verse 15, then Aaron must slaughter the first goat as a sin offering for the people and carry its blood behind the inner curtain. There he will sprinkle the, gut, the goat's blood over the atonement cover and in front of it, just as he did with the, bull, the bull's blood. Through this process, he will purify the most holy place. And he will do the same for the entire tabernacle because of the defiling sin and the rebellion of the Israelites. Just like the Israelites, God had already set up a plan to keep them purified before him because he is holy so that he wouldn't destroy them. That's what he did with Jesus. My God. No one uh, else is allowed inside the tabernacle when Aaron enters in for the purification ceremony in the most holy place. No one may enter in until he comes out again after purifying himself, his family, and all the congregation of Israel, making them right with the Lord. Then Aaron will come out to purify the altar that stands before the Lord. He will do this by taking some of the blood from the bull and the goat and putting it on each of the horns of the altar. Then he must sprinkle the blood with his finger seven times over the altar. In this way, he will cleanse it from Israel's, Israel's defilement and make it holy. When Aaron had finished purifying the most holy place and the tabernacle and the altar, he must present the live goat. He will lay both, hand, both of his hands on the goat's head and confess over it all the wickedness, rebellion, and sin of the people of Israel. In this way, he will transfer the people's sins to the head of the goat. Isn't that what Christ did for us? He took on all of our sin, sins of our forefathers, sins of us today, and sins of those that will come after us. He took on the sin of the entire creation. He's the scapegoat. Then, a man specially chosen for the task will drive the goat into the wilderness. As the goat goes into the wilderness, it will carry all the people's sins upon itself into a desolate land. Verse 23, when Aaron goes back to, into the tabernacle, he must take off his linen garments he was wearing when he entered the most holy place and he must leave the garments there. Then he must bathe himself with water in a sacred place, put on his regular garments, and go out to, the, uh, out to sacrifice a burnt offering for himself and a burnt offering for the people. Through this process, he will purify himself and the people, making them right with the Lord. He must then burn all the fat of the sin offering on the altar. They had to do all of this in order to be right before God. Jesus took all of this and did all of this in one act on the cross. My God, now do you understand why when you reject him, you reject God, you reject the purification that God wants to do in your life? My God. Leviticus is a book that will help you to understand why Christ did what he did. The man chosen to drive the scapegoat into the wilderness, wilderness of Aziel must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water. Then he may return to the camp. The bull and the goat presented as sin offerings, whose blood Aaron takes into the most holy place, 
for the purification ceremony will be carried outside the camp. The animal's hides, internal organs, and dung <coughs> are all to be buried. I'm sorry, to be burned. The man who burns them must wash his clothes and bathe himself in water before returning to the camp. Verse 29. On the 20, uh, I'm sorry, on the 10th day <clears throat> of the appointed month in early autumn, you must deny yourselves. Neither native born Israelites nor foreigners living among you may do any kind of work. This is a permanent law for you, which means it is still in practice now. On, the, on that day, offerings of purification will be made for you and you will be purified in the Lord's presence from all your sins. It will be a Sabbath day of complete rest for you, and you must deny yourselves. This is a permanent law for you. In future generations, my God. <coughs> In future generations, the purification ceremony, <coughs> excuse me, will, uh, will be performed by the priest who has been anointed and ordained to serve as high priest in place of his ancestor Aaron. <coughs> he will put on the holy linen garments and purify the most holy place, the tabernacle, the altar, the priest, and the entire congregation. This is a permanent law for you to purify the people of Israel from their sins, making them right with the Lord once each year. Moses followed all these instructions exactly as the Lord had commanded him. Leviticus chapter 17. Now, there are many people out there that seem to think that Christians go around eating blood. You know, I've heard all kinds of craziness, but that is not true. We don't eat blood, all right? But anyway, uh, the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to Aaron and his sons and all the people of Israel. This is what the Lord has commanded. If any native Israelite sacrifice a bull or a lamb or a goat anywhere inside or outside the camp, instead of bringing it to the entrance of the tabernacle to present it as an offering to the Lord, that person will be as guilty as a murderer. What? Such a person, person has shed blood and will be cut off from the community. The purpose of this rule is to stop the Israelites from sacrificing animals in the open fields. It will ensure that they bring their sacrifices to the priest at the entrance of the tabernacle so he can present them to the Lord as peace offerings. Then the priest will be able to splatter the blood against the Lord's altar at the entrance of the tabernacle and he will burn the fat as pleasing as a pleasing aroma to the lord the people must no longer be unfaithful to the lord by offering sacrifices to goat idols this is a permanent law for them to be observed from generation to generation give them this command as well if any native Israelite or foreigner living among you offers a burnt offering or a sacrifice, but does not bring it to the entrance of the tabernacle to offer it to the Lord, that person will be cut off from the community. And if any native Israelite or foreigner living among you eats or drinks blood in any form, <clears throat> I will turn against that person and cut him off from the community of your people. For the life of the body is in its blood. I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you. 
making you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. That is why I have said to the people of Israel, you must never eat or drink blood, neither you nor the foreigners living among you. That is why it is important that you read the word. So for all of you all that are out there thinking, well, Christians drink blood so that they can be purified. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Jesus' blood is our atoning blood. We don't drink blood for purification, okay? All right, got that settled? Let's keep going. Verse 13, <clears throat> and if any native Israelite or foreigner living among you goes hunting and kills an animal or a bird that is approved for eating, he must drain its blood and cover it with the earth. The life of every creature is in its blood. That is why I have said to the people of Israel, you must never eat or drink blood, for the life of any creature is in its blood. So whoever consumes blood will be cut off from the community. And if any native-born Israelite or foreigners eat the meat of an animal that died naturally or was torn up by wild animals, they must wash their clothes and bathe themselves in water. They will remain ceremonially unclean until evening, but then they will be clean. But if they do not wash their clothes or bathe themselves, they will be punished for their sin. Leviticus chapter 18. All right, here we go. I know a lot of y'all gonna click off on this, but we gonna read this. We gonna hear this. Forbidden sexual practices. I did not write it. I'm going to say it one more time. I did not write it. Not a single Christian living in the 20th century, 21st century, those that come in the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, however many centuries go until Christ comes back for the church, did not write it. You ready? Let's go. Then the Lord said to Moses, give the following instructions to the people of Israel. I am the Lord, your God. So do not act like the people in Egypt where you used to live or like the people of Canaan where I'm taking you to. You must not imitate their way of life. You must obey all my regulations and be careful to uh, obey my decrees for I am the Lord your God. If you obey my decrees and my regulations, you will find life through them. I am the Lord. You must never have sexual relations with a close relative, for I am the Lord. Do not violate your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. You must not have sexual relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with any of your father's wives, for this would violate your father. Do not have sexual relations with your sister or half-sister, whether she is your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether she was born into your household or someone else's. Do not have sexual relations with your granddaughter, whether she is your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter, for this would violate yourself. Do not have sexual relations with your stepsister, the daughter of any of your father's wives, for she is your sister. Do not have sexual relations with your father's sister, for she is your father's close relative. Do not have sexual relations with your mother's sister, for she is your mother's close relative. Do not violate your uncle, your father's brother, by having sexual relations 
with his wife, for she is your aunt. Do not have sexual relations with your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. You must not have sexual relations with her. Do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife, for this would violate your brother. Do not have sexual relations with both a woman and her daughter. And do not take her granddaughter, whether her son's daughter or daughter's daughter, and have sexual relations with her. They are close relatives, and this would be a wicked act. While your wife is living, do not marry her sister and have sexual relations with her, for they would be rivals. Do not have sexual relations with a woman during her period of menstrual impurity. Do not defile yourself by having sexual intercourse with your neighbor's wife. Do not permit any of your children to be offered as a sacrifice to Moalet, for you must not bring shame on the name of your God. I am the Lord. Verse 22, do not practice homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman. It is a detestable sin. A man must not defile himself by having sex with an animal. And a woman must not offer herself to a male animal to have intercourse with it. This is a perverse act. Do not defile yourselves in any of these ways. For the people I am driving out before you have defiled themselves in these ways. Because the entire land has become defiled, I am pushing the people who live, who live there. I'm sorry, I am punishing the people who live there. I will cause the land to vomit them out. You must obey all my decrees and my regulations. You must not commit any of these detestable sins. This applies both to native burned Israelites and to the foreigners living among you. All these detestable activities are practiced by the people of the land where I am taking you to. And this is how the land became defiled. So do not defile the land and give it a reason to vomit you out, as it will vomit out the people who live there now. Whoever commits any of these detestable sins will be cut off from the community of Israel. So obey my instructions and do not defile yourself by committing any of these detestable practices that are committed by the people who live in the land before you. I am the Lord your God. So I know many of you may be asking, well, well, how did those people know that they were doing detestable things? Did God ever tell them? Yes, he did. He had many people go in speaking to the people in those lands, and they refused to obey God. Well, you say, how do you know that? We've already read it. He sent in voices. He sent in prophets to say, stop doing this. I don't like this. This is going to defile you. It's going to cause me to punish you. And they refused to stop what they were doing. So God said, fine, I'm going to remove you off of the face of the earth. What? That's exactly what he did. God is telling us those are the things that he does not want us to do even today in this 21st century and the centuries that will follow us on until Christ comes back for the church. Leviticus chapter 19, holiness in personal conduct. The Lord has also said to Moses, give the following instructions to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must show great respect for your mother and father, and you must always observe my Sabbath days of rest. I am the Lord your God. Do not put your trust in idols or make metal images of gods for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. 
when you sacrifice a peace offering to the Lord, offer it properly so you will be accepted by God. The sacrifice must be eaten on the same day you offer it or on the next day. Whatever is left over until the third day must be completely burned up. If any of the sacrifice is eaten on the third day, it will be contaminated and I will not accept it. Anyone who eats it on the third day will be punished for defiling what is holy to the Lord and will be cut off from the community. Verse nine, when you harvest the crops of your land, do not harvest the grain along the edge of your fields and do not pick up what the harvesters drop. It is the same with your grape crop. Do not strip every last bunch of grapes from the vine and do not pick up the grapes that fall to the ground. Leave them for the poor and the foreigners living among you. I am the Lord, your God. Do not steal. Do not deceive or cheat one another. Do not bring shame on the name of your God by using it to swear falsely. I am the Lord. Do not defra defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not make your hired workers wait until the next day to receive their pay. Do not insult the deaf or cause the blind to stumble. You must fear your God. I am the Lord. Do not twist justice in legal matters by favoring the poor or being partial to the rich and powerful. Always judge people fairly. Do not spread slanderous gossip among your people. Do not stand idly by when your neighbor's life is threatened. I am the Lord. Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Say what? Let me read that again. All right, I will. Do not nurse hatred in your heart for any of your relatives. Confront people directly so you will not be held guilty for their sin. See that? Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. You must obey all my decrees. Do not make two different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two different kinds of seed. Do not wear cl uh, clothing woven from do two different kinds of thread. If a man has sex with a slave girl whose freedom has never been purchased, but who is committed to become another man's wife, he must pay full compensation to her master. But she, I'm sorry, but since she is not a free woman, neither the man nor the woman will be put to death. The man, however, must bring a ram as a guilt offering and present it to the Lord at the entrance of the tabernacle. The priest will then purify him before the Lord with the ram of the guilt offering, and the man's sin will be forgiven. Verse 23. When you enter the land and plant fruit trees, leave the fruit unharvested for the first three years and consider it forbidden. Do not eat it. In the fourth year, the entire crop must be consecrated to the Lord as a celebration of praise. Finally, in the fifth year, the year of grace, in the fifth year, you may eat the fruit. If you follow this pattern, your harvest will increase. I am the Lord, your God. And you wonder why our food supply is the way that it is now, because they are not even following this plan that God has for the land. The land was supposed to be able to uh, uh, rejuvenate itself, but we are pulling all the nutrients out of the land and not allowing it to do what it needs to do. And that's why they're genetically modifying so much of this stuff. Just saying. All right, we'll keep on going. Verse 26. Do not eat meat that has not been drained of its blood. Do not Oh, wait, you ready? 
do not practice fortune telling or witchcraft. I didn't write it. God wrote it through the hand of Moses. All right, let's keep going. Do not trim off the hair on your temples or trim your beards. Do not cut your bodies for the dead and do not mark your skin with tattoos. I am the Lord. I'm going to keep on going. Do not defile your daughter by making her a prostitute or the land will be filled with prostitution and wickedness. Verse 30, keep my Sabbath days of rest and show reverence toward my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Do not defile yourselves by turning to mediums, tarot card readers, fortune tellers, all these little places cropping up all over. Don't go in there. That's what God said. Do not defile yourselves by turning to mediums or to those who consult with the spirits of the dead. I am the Lord, your God. You know, now, I'm a black person, so let me talk to my black people. You know how we trying to get all connected to our roots and going and you dibbling and dabbling and all this spiritual spirits? There are always going to be spirits here in the land. Most of the time, what you're talking to is a demonic, familiar spirit. Okay. Do not defile yourselves by turning to mediums or to those who consult the spirits of the dead. I am the Lord, your God. Why do you want to talk to the dead when you can talk to Christ who is living and Holy Spirit who is living, who will guide you through your life? Stand up in the presence of an elderly and show respect for the aged. Fear your God, I am the Lord. Do not take advantage of foreigners who live among you in your land. Treat them like native born Israelites and love them as you love yourself. Remember, you were once foreigners living in a land, in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord, your God. What is God saying? Never forget where I have delivered you from. Yeah, today you're on easy street, but you aren't always on easy street. Never forget where you came from. Do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or volume. Your scales and weights must be accurate, and your containers for measuring dry materials or liquids must be accurate. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You must be careful to keep all my decrees and regulations by putting them into practice. You, me, we have to put this word that we are reading into practice. It cannot just be something we hear and go, oh, Sounds good. Huh? Okay. You've got to begin to do it. Be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. And he says, I am the Lord. And our final chapter for this afternoon, Leviticus chapter 20. Punishment for disobedience. The Lord said to Moses, Give the people of Israel these instructions, which apply both to native Israelites and to foreigners living in Israel. If any of them offer their children as a sacrifice to Molech, they must be put to death. The people of the community must stone them to death. I myself will turn against them and cut them off from the community because they have defiled my sanctuary and brought shame on my holy name by offering their children to Moale. And if the people of the community ignore those who offer their children to Moale and refuse to execute them, I myself will turn against them and their families and will cut them off from the community. This will happen to all who commit spiritual prostitution by worshiping Moalek. Didn't know there was such a thing, did you? Spiritual prostitution. My God. 
I will also turn against those who commit spiritual prostitution by putting their trust in mediums, soothsayers, these tarot card readers, or those who consult the spirits of the dead. I'm spiritual. Better watch yourself. I will cut them off from the community. So set yourselves apart to be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Keep all my decrees by putting them into practice, for I am the Lord who makes you holy. You don't make you holy. I don't make you holy. The Lord makes you holy. And by walking in his word and following his decrees and his standards and his statutes, it begins to make you holy. See that? All right. Anyone who dishonors father or mother must be put to death. Search such a person is guilty of a capital offense. If a man commits adultery with his neighbor's wife, both the man and the woman who have committed adultery must be put to death. My God. If a man violates his father by having sex with one of his father's wives, both the man and the woman must be put to death, for they are guilty of a capital offense. If a man has sex with his daughter-in-law, both must be put to death. They have committed a perverse act and are guilty of a capital offense. If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They must be put to death, for they are guilty of a capital offense. If a man marries both a woman and her mother, he has committed a wicked act. The man and both women must be burned to death to wipe out such wickedness from among you. If a man has sex with an animal, he must be put to death and the animal must be killed. If a woman presents herself to a male animal to have intercourse with it, she and the animal must both be put to death. You must kill both for they are guilty of a capital offense. If a man marries his sister, the daughter of either his father or his mother, and they have sexual relations, it is a shameful disgrace. They must be publicly cut off. They must be publicly cut off from the community. Since the man has violated his sister, he will be punished for his sin. If a man has sexual relations with a woman during her menstrual period, both of them must be cut off from the community. For together they have exposed the source of her blood flow. Do not have sexual relations with your aunt, whether your mother's sister or your father's sister. This would dishonor a close relative. Both parties are guilty and will be punished for their sin. If a man has sex with his uncle's wife, he has violated his uncle. Both the man and the woman will be punished for their sin and they will die childless. My God. If a man marries his brother's wife, it is an act of impurity. He has violated his brother and the guilty couple will remain childless. You must keep all my decrees and regulations by putting them into practice. Otherwise, the land to which I am bringing you as a new home will vomit you out. Any of this stuff going on in your life and you feel that the land is vomiting you out, you can't seem to get your footing, you can't seem to make anything prosper. Do not live according to the customs of the people I am driving out before you. It is because they do these shameful things that I detest them. But I have promised you you will possess their land because I will give it to you as a possession, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God who has set you apart from all other people. You must therefore make a distinction between ceremonially clean and unclean animals and between clean 
and unclean birds. You must not defile yourself by eating anything unclean. I'm sorry, by eating any unclean animal or bird or creature that scurries along the ground. I have identified them as being unclean for you. You must be holy because I, the Lord, am holy. I have set you apart from all other people to be my very own. Men and women among you who act as mediums or consult the spirits of the dead must be put to death by stoning. They are guilty of a capital offense. My God. So if you see that something is jumping out at you, Holy Spirit is speaking to you, deal with these areas. If you see that you have crossed the line and you are now in a place where God is like, you stepping in territory I ask you not to step into. Ask for forgiveness. Let the blood of Jesus cover that thing and move forward. Come up out of it. The word of God is very plain. So we're going to ask that Holy Spirit would continue to minister to your heart so that you will be able to embrace what God is saying. This stuff didn't go away just because of the New Testament and the work of the cross. This is still in practice today. Although we don't stone people to death anymore, you see things going on in people's lives and they're like, I just don't understand why oh, this is happening. God is dealing with you. So let's go ahead and get it right. You have to examine your life against the word. All right? Not against your brother's life. Not against your sister's life. Everybody has to stand before God for themselves and make their lives, make sure your life lines up with the word. As we discussed on yesterday, everything that we do, good, bad, is being recorded. Remember that. Don't let this stuff be lingering out there. You're glad that all the good stuff is being recorded. But what about this stuff that we have hidden? Seeking out spirits, going to mediums, reading tarot cards, going to, uh, looking at your horoscope. What are you doing? You want to know what your life has coming up? Ask God. He's the one who made you. He's the one that created this world. He's the one that made the, mir the, the mediums and the spirits. He didn't want them to go in that direction, but they did. They followed after the spirits, the familiar spirits of this world. Look, I'm going to give you this piece right here. Most people don't get past that realm of uh, where the familiar spirits lie. There are many spirits in this world, many. But you've got to excel past that. And the only way that you can excel past that place, past that dimension, past all the spirits that are roaming throughout the earth, the world, you've got to allow Holy Spirit to purify you and bring you into the presence of God. If somebody is only telling you your, your phone number and you, uh, you ask God for this, everything's going to be all right, well, that's, that's common sense. Let's get to the place where we are so in tune with God and his will and his word that when someone comes to you with these second heaven prophecies, you spit that stuff out because you already know everything is going to be all right. You already know God is going to provide for you. You already know that things are going to change. But we're the ones that are prophesying the truth of the throne of God. Come on, where are they? That's where we need to get to. But we want to camp out in the familiar spirit area, in the generalization area. Aren't you tired of that? I know I am. I listen to prophecies now and I'm like, well, good grief. You don't need somebody to tell you that. If you just read the word, you know that. Come on, guys, let's dig deeper. Let's go to the deeper place in God. So you're not out, always out there running around looking for a prophecy. That's when you get caught up and you start going to the tarot card readers and the palm readers and the fortune tellers and your horoscope, making God upset. My God, all right. 
Well, we'll be back tomorrow reading Leviticus chapters 21, 22, 23, 24, and 25, right? How many chapters are in Leviticus? I forgot already. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I love you. <laughs> and we'll be back on here tomorrow. Bye-bye. I know today was a little tight, but sometimes the word has to get in our face and make us see what we're doing, okay? All right. I love you all. We'll be back on here tomorrow. Come on, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Don't get stuck. It's not about to bring shame, but God wants to expose what's going on in our lives. He did it to the children of Israel, so why are you so sensitive? Stop being so sensitive. God is going to show you who you are. Here's the newsflash. When we really see who we are, it is disgusting. You want to turn your face from it. But God is saying, ah, 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 come on, come on, let me clean it. You know, like when a child has a cut and you as the mother want to, you got to get all the gunk out before you can put the Band-Aid on it. So you got to clean it out. You got to pour uh, a bend, uh, what's that stuff called? Hydrogen peroxide in it and it bubbles to get all the gunk out. That's the same thing God is doing. The child's face is all turned. They're screaming and hollering. But you, as the parent, hold that hand, all that wiggling and wriggling that child is doing, you hold that hand and you do what's necessary to get the gunk out so that the child doesn't get an infection. Well, that's what God is doing with us today. He does not want you to get an infection. He wants you to be purified before him. So let him do it. Stop wiggling all over the place. Stop running every time God shows you yourself. Stand there like the woman and the man that you are and allow God to heal you. All right? You're going to come out on the other side, no scar. You're going to forget about the whole thing, and you're going to be moving forward and living victorious. Okay? Breathe. <sighs> Let it out. Okay. We'll be back here tomorrow reading more of the word of the Lord. I love you all so much. All right. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.